Good morning, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Leila Najahibri, and I'm the CEO of the Australian Fashion Council. First, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the various lands that we are meeting on today. We are hosting this session on Gadigal land of the Eora Nation, and we pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and future. On behalf of the, of the AFC, it's my absolute pleasure to officially launch the very first AFC Bash Tech Lab, generously supported by the City of Sydney. Thank you also to the University of Technology Sydney and Innovative Manufacturing CRC for their valued contribution to this program. The AFC has, team has been working with four innovative Australian Bash Tech brands to bring this project to life. And here I would like to say a special thank you to Pete Smith from Style Atlas for going above and beyond guiding collaboration with the tech teams and assisting this program to, to be the best it can be for the fashion industry. The AFC could not have created such a program, of course, without the generous support of the City of Sydney. And we were hoping and, uh, and really excited about having Deputy Lord Mayor Jess Scully uh, joining us here today. Unfortunately, uh, Jess is uh, very unwell this morning and couldn't make it um, to, to this webinar. But I will continue to talk about uh, uh, Jess and the, and, and the work she's been doing for the city of Sydney and our industry in particular as well. So Jess is known for her great work in advocating for new models to address the housing prices in the city of Sydney and supporting workforces of the future. She has worked tirelessly on reviving our city's nightlife, expanding access to culture and protecting digital rights in the public realm. But more importantly for us, she's always been a great advocate for the fashion industry and more recently actively supported the AFC in lobbying the government to help ease the lockdown restrictions on garment factory workers. Um, Jess, uh, we hope you feel, uh, you, you feel better soon and we really look forward to sharing uh, more um, uh, about this project with you very soon. Now I'd like to introduce Tracy Hamilton, who will be facilitating and delivering this program on behalf of the AFC. Tracy comes with a wealth of experience providing advisory support on technology innovation, brand marketing communication strategy, and business building capabilities to growth focused firms. Tracy, over to you. Thanks so much. Good morning. I feel like I have the absolute lucky stick to be launching the AFC Fash Tech Labs for 2022. This program is just an extraordinary example of what happens when really determined folks come together to tackle the world's biggest problems in their own backyard. So in the next wee while, I'm going to take you through not only our ambition for the Fash Tech Labs, but also an overview of our partners who you'll then get to meet in detail. So Towards Sustainable Growth Together is our handle and it's our mission. AFC, who you know well, for those of you joining us for the first time today, it's our pleasure to welcome you to the conversation and to share the story of what we're doing as an industry body to rally sustainability and technology to really deliver sustainable impact. And this particular labs program that we've built is looking at increasing the commercialization of sustainability through innovation for Australian fashion and textile businesses. These great programs don't happen, you know, alone. And what's really wonderful is that today we're really proud to announce that we've brought together a curated selection of Australian City of Sydney fashion manufacturing businesses together with Australian technology businesses. And um, in the select applicants, thank you for all of you who spent the time putting your applications through. It was so incredibly difficult to choose um, the final, final roundup of fashion brands. But in the next few weeks, you're going to meet more and more of the program participants. And from the fashion business perspective, You've got our large enterprise brands, those businesses that we all know and love, like Q and Bianca Spender. And then it spans to some very cool up and coming designers. So Daniel Avekian, um, UFAM, Matteo, West 14th, 
really looking forward to having everyone together over the next six months and to see that gap between emerging fashion brands, enterprise fashion brands and technology solutions start to come closer. Now, I said we couldn't do this you know, alone. So not only are we collaborating with fashion businesses, we're really thrilled to bring together an incredible connected solution really special program that um, my high point has been watching Pete and his team build a 3D sampling solution. And when we started this um, process at the very early days, the, the aim was to create knowledge exchange, to bring business together with technology companies and to talk about the problems and the opportunities. But here we are, almost February, and we're going to be sharing a really neat prototype workflow that Pete and his team are going to be bringing those lucky fashion brands and manufacturing businesses through in the next six months. What's our aim? Well, FashTech Labs, we want to see knowledge sharing. So part of today's session you're going to see, we're going to wrap up with a Q&A. And you'll notice that on today's webinar, you've got the option to chat, but there's also a Q&A function, and that's where you guys come in. So in the audience, we would love to hear your questions. We really want to know what's that burning thing that you would love to ask our panelists about, and what are the things that are standing in the way of your business adopting the technology that you'd love? Um, I think a lot of us are hearing the exciting news of Web3, you may have seen some of the initiatives done by international fashion brands and you're going, what does this mean in Australia? Here's your chance to ask those pokey questions. We want to get the ball rolling today. This is our launch day. And we're going to take all of those great questions and learnings and use it to help accelerate sustainability at scale. City of Sydney has a real ambition to become the destination for technology and innovation globally. And we believe that the fashion business can help sort of catapult Australia forward from that perspective. So look forward to the journey and um, really grateful for the opportunity to be championing this cause today. Now, the Fash Tech Labs, we've touched on some of our technology partners generally. And when Layla introduced the session today, we've got three really awesome themes that come through and you're gonna see it. Um, you're going to meet Simon from IMCRC shortly, who's going to talk about Future Map. And Future Map is a really wonderful business diagnostic workshop. Why are we doing a business diagnostic workshop? Well, when you have an ambition to go somewhere, it's really great to work out where you are today. So this is about transformation readiness. So where is each business that comes through the Fashion Tech Labs program today? So that when we get to June, we can see what tomorrow looks like. And then we have the wonderful team from UTS, SME at UTS. You're going to meet John today, and he's going to take you through those action pathways forward and how a university that's plugged deeply into industry in the way that UTS is can actually be leveraged to help you move forward. And if you're not part of the core application and participation program, I'd really invite you to take advantage, perk those ears up today. If you're interested in technology adoption and you didn't make the cutoff for this year's Fash Tech Labs, never fear, there's still a chance to get involved and to leverage the learning from this morning's session. And finally, our wonderful group of technology companies, Australian technology companies that are all at different stages of their own growth journey have come together in a really wonderful way these businesses have come together to deliberately help Russian businesses on the path to technology adoption. And so you're going to hear about the connected 3D solution and our aim to deliver case studies off the back of this incubator, this lab, this living lab for six months. So I wanted to say thank you for joining me on the journey and um, welcome to Fash Tech Labs 2022. Now going to pass over to um, Simon, uh, pardon me, I'm now going to pass over to John from UTS. Pardon me. Hi, John. Kia ora. Thanks, Tracy. Um, 
So my name is John Zabo. I'm the acting director for corporate relations at UTS and our team um, developed and, and grew SME at UTS last year in collaboration with the IMCRC. So we're really excited to be partnering with the AFC and the City of Sydney on this project. Um, I might just get someone to push <laughs> through with the slides. So SME at UTS, um, just as a high level statement, um, what we've seen over the past few years is that as a sector, the higher education, um, we haven't really met the needs of SMEs. Um, and that's something that's been quite, I suppose, um, on our minds for some time. So what we were wanting to do is really look at how we can best you know, service this market, which is obviously a large proportion of the workforce, and obviously the connectivity with where we are within Tech Central. Um, you know, this, this is an amazing opportunity to be able to, to tap into the creative um, precinct that we are part of. Um, and obviously fashion is, is a big part of that there. Um, so what we did in through this process of creating this program is really looking at the needs of the SME. And so what we'd seen in the past is that when universities did actually engage with SMEs, um, it was quite transactional and it was usually through the lens of research. And so what we wanted to do was create a program that was, um, can we go back on that slide if that's okay? <laughs> um, thank you. Um, so what we wanted to do is create a program that was very holistic and SME centered. Um, so obviously our partnership with Simon and the IMCRC is crucial in terms of being able to set a baseline for a business, um, for an organisation in terms of where they're at. And so I'm going to go into more details with that later on. But um, SME ETS fundamentally is the what's next after you come through the Future Map Diagnostic Tool. So really it's, it's a mechanism to connect with our talent, obviously our researchers, our infrastructure and expertise. So as, as Tracy said earlier, um, what this program is really about is knowledge creation and knowledge transfer. And you know, that's at the core of what we do as a university for UTS. Um, and ultimately what we're trying to do is reduce the barriers for SMEs to be able to engage with industry four. And Simon's going into more details with that there as well. So really to dispel the myths around, um, you know, the emerging technologies that are out there and the accessibility to these there as well. I'll get you to just move on with the next slide. Um, so this is just a bit of an overview of a pathway with how SME at UTS works. Um, so ultimately, you know, everybody coming through this program will be able to go through the Future Map Diagnostic Tool, um, and then there'll be some time set up afterwards by um, our team within SME at UTS to actually debrief that report and see how the suggestions and, and recommendations from that report can actually dovetail into um, areas of engagement with UTS. Um, so they can start off with, you know, anything from innovation leadership skills through our business school, um, working with our students. So it can be sort of one-on-one -on -one internships or, you know, student uh, industry projects brought into the classroom. Um, obviously our infrastructure is, is, a, is a massive asset and where we are here in Tech Central, um, obviously accessing things like the data arena, the advanced fabrication lab and the like their proto space. Um, is, is really crucial to be able to experiment and test, um, but also to actually have SMEs not invest in this technology straight away for, for them to be able to see what's going to work for them. And then ultimately taking them through that journey to start experimenting. So, you know, looking at proof of concepts, you know, developing MVPs that ultimately are going to sort of push them along the innovation um, pathway there. Um, I'll get you to go to the next slide. And so ultimately why we've done this, why we've created SME at UTS is that obviously from a government perspective, you know, it's about job creation and growth. Um, from an SME point of view, um, you know, we are wanting to help SME as a sector, but individually grow, um, you know, obviously look at them innovate, look at, look at them innovating, um, obviously from a knowledge transfer perspective, what we hope to see with this um, Fash Tech Labs is a cohort of sharing um, so I think you know, that's going to be a beautiful thing to come out of this is just other brands connecting with each other and understanding, you know, with a focus on sustainability and, and obviously technology adoption, you know, how can they do that as a group? Um, talent, obviously, this is probably something that everyone talks to us about. So, you know, how do we support SMEs coming through this program with talent coming out of UTS? And then obviously upskilling there as well. 
Um, and for us, this is an amazing learning experience to be able to tap into a different sector of the market. And for students, ultimately, you know, connecting them with organisations that may not you know, normally uh, connect into. So, you know, hopefully there's, there's going to be some really good, um, you know, human capital exchanges through students and academics there. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you, John. I just love hearing you talk and I really love seeing the linkage between academia, innovation, leadership and um, R&D opportunities. So really excited for fashion brands and technology brands on today's launch, you know, the opportunity to dig in and really do wonderful things. I wanted to take the opportunity now to hand over to Simon Dawson and hear more about the Future Map part of the program. Simon. Yeah, good morning. Nice to meet you all. Um, just a quick intro from me. Uh, I come from uh, the IMCRC, so we are an organisation that is here to um, help um, across any sector, uh, help with people to sort of think about how they might interact with Industry 4 and some of the new rapidly accelerating technologies. Um, I'm a manufacturer by trade, so um, worked in many sectors, uh, reasonably new here to this sector, but have worked across uh, automotive, buses, trains, helicopters, food, drinks, uh, lots and lots of different things. Um, so I'll be driving the session we have planned for Wednesday on um, Future Map. Uh, so just here really briefly want to tell you a little bit about why I think that's a really critical message here. Um, whilst you know we all get, if I happen to be running a factory that's making lots of things out of plastics and metals, we can probably see that. I think there's huge relevance here in this sector and huge opportunity um, for us to be thinking about what's accessible, what's doable, um, and what's likely to keep accelerating and keep changing. So if you can just flip to the next slide for me. Um, I like using the same messages consistently. I'm a um, Consistency, use the same messages and push the same story. And I think this story is really important just to get in your head. And uh, why do we what do we call it industry for? Uh, and what that why that's a useful message for us. So we'll do this again on Wednesday, but if you kind of rewind through um, the, the concepts of mechanization, mass production, then automation, you could you could kind of think of those as industry one, two, three. I'm sure they didn't talk and call them that. Um, but importantly, when you think about what's happened in the last 10, 20 years that the acceleration of this has been significant. It's not just the fact that things have got more complicated, it's that they are changing at a pace now, which is going to become, uh, which is becoming ridiculous, frankly. Um, so that curve perhaps is almost the most important thing here. Uh, and if I can flick to the next side, that leads me to the um, the second message that um, this was in, this this data introduced to me recent, reasonably recently, and it for me, it's staggeringly telling about what we need to all do as people in business, in industry, in whatever sector we're in. So if you think about, this is the rate of adoption of technology. So we talk about the landline phone, which went from first being around in the early 1900s, took you know a fair while to get global, uh, global adoption. Cell phones, so those old enough to have had a Nokia 3310, would, would have seen that that, you know, you, you might have had one if you were a manager, but the people that work for you didn't, all that sort of thing going on. So not everybody had one for a fair while, and it took a while when we started getting black prison things. So that adoption, you, could, you, you felt the adoption happen over several years. Now we're in a world where the adoption is next to vertical. Uh, and I think we have to consider that to be the case for all of our sectors. If something becomes adopted, some of the technologies that Tracy was talking about, if it becomes a norm, it will become globally the norm within months, potentially. Uh, augmented reality, how's that going to play in the minute Google or whoever it is gets a dominant position with augmented reality glasses. We're going to throw away our iPhones. We're all going to have augmented reality glasses with all the apps built in. It, and it, when it happens, it'll happen like that. So I think that's an important message. Um, so just moving on, and again, we'll, we'll really talk about that. Uh, and next one for me, please. So critically for me, um, and again, there's lots of different technologies here. Artificial intelligence, what does that mean? How do we play with that? Uh, all of these technologies are becoming cheaper, they're becoming easier to engage with, they're all designed to be more scalable than they were, and they're getting stronger and closer to all of us. My era as a manufacturing graduate years and years ago, everything was a five-year plan and a, lots and lots of CAD drawings of how to do it. That's not the way now. The way now is engage with people like John at UTS, get down to Tech Lab, get in, play with it, make something happen, and learn from that to make the next thing happen. It's not capital intensive, it's not as scary as it used to be. Uh, and I think there's one more, Tracy. 
And lastly, and again, we'll talk about this, um, what you will get from me on Wednesday is a significant push on the concepts of change management and how that really affects what's going on here. I am a strong believer that the challenge we have in Australia as, a, as across all of our sectors is way too much inertia around some of this. Um, we don't have the scale that they might have in other parts of the world for there to be somebody sitting on the board who has is the digital information officer kind of role. Most of our organizations and manufacturers aren't big enough for that. So we need to be thinking about the change dynamic. What are we doing about making sure there's a vision, there's a tactic, there's a plan. We know what the first steps are to allow us to do something. So you'll hopefully from me get a sense of pragmatic, um, how do we actually do stuff? Uh, so I will talk a bit about what the tech is, but I'll probably talk as much about what are the barriers to making it successful for you uh, as anything else. And that's where obviously our relationship with the likes of John and UTS and others uh, helps us to, get to, to help people to keep moving forward. So um, on that, I'll, I'll hand back to Tracy. So that's a bit of a snip, quick run through, um, but looking forward to having an opportunity to talk with you all more on Wednesday. Thank you so much, Simon. And uh, for those of you who are going on Wednesday, what's happening on Wednesday? Well, on Wednesday, the first part of our Fashion Tech Labs 2022 journey begins. And so our successful applicants, the fashion brands and manufacturing brands are coming together to run through Future Map. And so you would have heard the detail there where Simon's given you visibility to what that means. That transformation readiness roadmap starts on Wednesday. And we go through change management and look at the barriers and levers to actually getting adoption started. So very much looking forward to being part of that journey. Thanks for sharing, Simon. With no further ado, I wanted to welcome Pete Smith to the stage. And he's going to take you through our connected 3D sampling workflow solution. One of my favorite parts of the program, although you're not supposed to have favorite children, I'm really excited to introduce Pete to the stage. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Maybe if we could have a look at that first slide there. Um, yeah, so my name is Pete Smith. I'm the founder and CEO of Style Atlas, and we're the creator of Quadrant, a product development platform for today's fashion brands. So if we can go to the next slide. We like to describe Quadrant as Shopify for fashion makers. So in the same way that Shopify Ooh, can we just go back a little bit? Um, so in the same way that Shopify has revolutionized the sales channels um, for brands um, by making an online store easy to set up and manage, um, to offer really powerful features, but also make it really cost effective, Quadrant is doing for the other side of your brand's business, your design and product development. So I want to ask a question or pose a question to all the brands who are on the call today. What if there was a way to significantly reduce your brands? If we can go to your sampling costs, your time to market, and your carbon footprint. And also as a result of that, also create more cost-effective and scalable wholesaling, more immersive e-commerce experiences, and even new revenue streams. Well, all of these things are benefits of a 3D development workflow. But I completely understand that you're probably thinking, well, what's the catch? Um, and there is a catch. If we can go to the next slide. Well, there has been a catch. It's not that the technology doesn't work or that it's too experimental. Uh, large brands like PVH have shown this. This is an article from Vogue Business from over a year ago where um, their CEO talked about how they were changing to only go, only use 3D uh, for all of their sampling requirements. The challenge with 3D has been that the resources uh, and the business transformation required um, to bring on 3D has been very large. So it's been a very large leap of faith. And that's left 3D to the domain of only the very large or the very new. And we think this needs to change. So with the support and assistance of the AFC and the City of Sydney and UTS, and in collaboration with these great tech companies, 
that you see on the screen that you're about to meet shortly, we have created a new approach. One that, sorry, one that tackles the huge cost, um, the time wastage and the environmental damage caused by um, tr the traditional sampling process. Sorry, Tracy, can we just go back for a second? Uh, a little bit more. Yep. So one that tackles the huge cost, the time wastage and the environmental environmental damage of the traditional sampling process and position brands to utilize the 3D assets created in the product development in areas like virtual showrooming and e-commerce and even develop new revenue streams through exciting technologies like NFTs. Next slide. We've designed this approach to be a holistic practical solution. And next one that requires a much reduced business transformation because it follows traditional sampling workflows. And that's really important because it facilitates hybrid workflows, a combination of both digital and physical sampling. And this is, this is critical because there's no expectation that brands are suddenly going to do a PVH and, and change um, suddenly to just using 3D. But just as importantly, it removes the need for brands to find and hire new staff or upskill their existing staff in 3D because our tech partners as part of this program can provide those services. And secondly, we've designed it to be really cost effective. This is obviously critical for adoption, but when we look at the cost benefits, we're not just looking at the direct financial costs involved in sampling, we're all also creating a solution that can improve time to market and also the, your brand's carbon footprint. Next slide. So our objectives for this program is to work hand in hand with the amazing brand partners that are part of this program to refine our solution and to battle test it and through that, develop a comprehensive case study for the industry. And ultimately, we want to create an industry vetted pathway for Australian brands to implement 3D design and development into their businesses in a very practical, cost effective, and sustainable way. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you so much, Pete. I really love every time we come back to our objectives and I see the technology companies come together with this mission to really tackle um, the time savings, the cost savings and the carbon savings. I'm really looking forward to us capturing those inputs and insights on our journey. So thank you for sharing. For those of you who are following along on the audience, please, I'm going to be breaking for Q&A soon. So I'd love to get, I'd love to get your questions. If you can please populate your questions in the Q&A, we're looking forward to uh, talking to you all about them. And in the meantime, I wanted to welcome you to the individual tech teams, our tech team partners that have come together to produce the connected 3D workflow solution. So this segment's going to run a little bit like a fireside chat, if you imagine us all together as a panel. Um, and I'm going to welcome each technology company to come to the stage and uh, introduce themselves, share a little bit about their business and how it fits into the collaborative connected solution. Um, and I'd love to hear what they're most looking forward to for the program ahead. So the first business I wanted to welcome to the stage, here's our wonderful partners, is Bandicoot. Welcome to the stage, Team Bandicoot. <laughs> Thanks very much, Tracy. Um, my name is David Monaghan. I'm the CEO of Bandicoot, um, and we are digitising fabrics for the fashion industry. So what's that actually mean? Well, broadly speaking, when you design a garment, you normally choose the physical fabrics and materials and get them shipped to you from a mill, and you go from there. But if you actually want to design a garment using materials on a computer, then you're going to need to have a very faithful digital representation of them. And that means not only the colour, but you really want to have some information about the texture of them. You want to know how rough they are to feel or the shine and how they behave under light. And that's actually where Bandicoot comes in. 
So we've got a technology that we call Bandicoot Shimmer Scan. And we take a set of photos that record exactly how the fabric responds to light. And this actually creates a digital twin of the fabric with infinite yardage. So you can use it to design virtual garments, dress an avatar, walk down a virtual runway. And you can place that virtual garment in any scene and the digital fabric will behave just like it's supposed to with the real fabric in the world. So we're gonna be working with you, the brands, um, to create digital fabrics for your designs and enable you to actually pass them onwards through the uh, workflow to, into Quadrant and then onwards to the 3D designers. And we're actually really excited to be a part of this program because it's just an opportunity to work with some forward thinking, innovative Australian fashion brands, help speed up their time to market as Pete was outlining and reduce waste, which is something I think that is important to all of us. So we're Bandicoot and we're really looking forward to talking with you. Thanks so much, David. Welcome to the program and thank you for supporting us. I love the idea of infinite yardage. That sounds like something everyone wants to aspire to and I'm really excited to see the Bandicoot technology come to the table. Thank you for your support. Next up, I would love to welcome Twila from Cat. Welcome, kia ora. Hi, Tracy. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Twila. Oh, welcome. Yay. Okay. Um, so Couture CAD, we're a team of um, six pattern makers and we provide uh, digital pattern making and um, for brands. And we take your traditional method of card patterns and, you know, you cut them out into fabric and make up your twile. So instead of doing that, we create digital patterns. Um, we simulate them on an avatar and the avatar can be customized to whatever your brand uses, whether it's children's wear, men, women, um, maternity even, plus size. So you have a, a huge library of shapes and sizes and you simulate your designs on an avatar without cutting or, you know, we get uh, David's digital fabrics, hopefully, and um, simulate your exact garment on an avatar without you having to go through the expense or time of waiting for sampling fabrics to arrive, you can check your prints, you can do all that sort of stuff in a virtual fitting room. So you don't need your team of five people, your designers, your fit model, your assistants, you, you know, it's just the avatar and it's presented to you walking, standing, poses, uh, walking down a runway so you can see it in motion. Uh, you can see it from any angle. So it saves a lot of time. Um, a lot of wastage so it's been a fantastic solution for the, the brands that we've worked with so far they've realized huge savings in time and money um yeah and i really look forward to this program being able to share that with brands that haven't adopted it being able to show you um its savings and its uh, flexibility you know you can see the avatar from anywhere in the world you don't have to all be in the one room. So there's huge advantages from different points. Um, yeah, so I look forward to sharing it all with you. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Twila. You know, I'm really looking forward to being able to present at our next knowledge exchange, which I'm gonna to touch on shortly, where the technology teams are actually going to be running through demos. So if you're liking some of these initial sort of introductions, there will be the opportunity in a month to actually have a deep, um, technology demo and to learn more. Um, and particularly CatuaCAD, uh, Twila's got some really fabulous case studies and businesses that she's already working with who have transitioned from 2D to 3D design and a few emerging designers that are just going straight to 3D. So it's a very exciting part of the solution. And talking about exciting parts of the solution, I'm really thrilled to welcome Pons to the stage. Huge fan and um, welcome Pons from Pons Studio. Hi Tracy, hello everyone. I am Pons. My name is Martina Ponsoni and I'm the founder of Pons Studio. And I'm very excited to be part of this, uh, of this program with the AFC. And you know, I'm very keen to meet some of the brands that applied for this. Uh, for this project and what we do in a nutshell is connecting all the dots that come from you know like 
Bandicoot fabric, digital fabrics, and then Tuila's um, like couture card patterns and flaws and turning them into actual, like final digital assets, which uh, will be like life life copies of uh, your garments and accessories that, that like, can then be used as samples for selling or on your e-commerce or you know will allow you to tap into VR or AR or any new solution and technology that is emerging now so that you can create um, some new engaging ways to, um, to showcase to your audience. So yeah, it's very exciting and I'm very keen to start this program and see <laughs> what will come out of it. Thank you so much for sharing your goals and, and, and your participation, Pons. Really grateful for your support and um, really looking forward to us getting to the design part of the program. So that's the going to be the juicy bit. And for those of you that do follow along, we're looking forward to being at the point in the program where we can start to share some real life cases with some digital avatars that are going to be wearing the garments. So that's part of the program of work. Thank you for those of you that are putting questions in the Q&A box. I'm really grateful and looking forward to asking your burning questions to the panelists shortly. But before we do that, I wanted to welcome Matt from the Uno to the stage. And she'll remind me if I've landed that or not. Welcome. Kia ora. Hi, how are, how are you? It's it's Nuno, so nearly, very nearly. <laughs> it's for, it's meant to be new, new normality, the new normal. So we are a marketplace that is going to be selling everything to do with fashion NFTs and digital wearables. So we're really looking forward to presenting all your hard work in this new Web3 metaverse ready way. So all of your assets that you're going to be building on this, this tech project with, with our colleagues, uh, we can come in at the end and, and, and build a new, uh, a new workflow at the, at the end to showcase these as NFTs. Thank you so much, Nat. And um... Natalie's business is part of a really exciting part of the program. So obviously the focus of Bash Tech Labs 2022 is around tackling sustainability in the sampling part of the work stream. So in, in our supply chain, we've dug straight into the sampling part and the connected technology solution tackles the challenges around time, cost and carbon. But we also were excited by the potential to go once you've cracked that cookie, what happens next? And so when we get to the June part of our program, we actually shift gears and we move into the future of sustainable selling. And we think that's going to be really interesting. And um, we talk about technology being like dog years. So if you can imagine how exciting Web3 feels today in January, wait till you meet us again in June. I'm really excited and so looking forward to our entire program and can't wait till we hit that stage. In the June segment, you're also going to meet other technology partners like Ford, who support the AFC as their virtual showrooming partner. So a number of you will have experienced their technology. And we're also collecting and curating more interesting speakers between now and then. For those of you attending Fashion Week um, here in Sydney, you're going to hear a lot about sustainability and technology and innovation. And this program, we hope, is really going to lead the way. I couldn't close out without giving Pete the chance to just bookend. He did such a wonderful job of introducing the technology solution. And I'd love, Pete, if you may indulge me and just share a little bit about what you're most looking forward to about our session for the next six months together. Yeah, hi Tracy. Um, so uh, it's an interesting one. With with in creating Quadrant, it's all about trying to optimize, you know, business workflows and 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 taking make lots of little little tiny improvements and coming up with a big improvement. Um, but what I'm so excited about 3D is how we can make really significant change in the industry, um, which is really required. Um, 
And what I'm most excited about is how we've been able to bring together um, uh, both, you know, industry bodies like the AFC, um, government, the City of Sydney, education institutions like UTS, um, tech partners collaborating, independent companies collaborating together, and then, you know, industry partners in terms of fashion brands all together into a program like this to create something that's really new um, and is really going to help the industry in a really practical way, um, but also hopefully show, you know, Australian leadership for the, for the rest of the world. So I think it's going to be an amazing program and I'm just so excited to get started. I'm so excited as well. Thank you so much. I'm really grateful for your support and your stewardship and, and championship. Thank you so much to our fashion technology partners. Bravo. Can't wait to get you guys kicked off on the journey. Thank you to Simon and uh, John and Annette, the team at UTS. How cool is our program? I am so excited about the body of work that we've got lined up and this started as an opportunity to be a really discreet, intimate knowledge exchange. And when Prue and Layla and I and the team at AFC got going on the content, we're like, we can't keep this to ourselves. It's so exciting and wonderful that we just want to be able to share as much as we can with as many of you. So we've, to use a very 21 word, pivoted. So you're now going to be able to follow along for the next six months. So there's actually going to be an opportunity to come back and watch live on AFC Fashtech Labs while you were away. Um, we've actually put together a viewing schedule. And so for the next six months, you're going to be able to tune in on a monthly basis on a webinar like this on, on the AFC Zoom and learn from the fashion brands and the technology brands as they start to work together. And so in between each broadcast moment, we've got a whole body of work that we're working on in the background anyway, but we thought it was a really wonderful chance to come back to you all on a regular cycle to actually talk about how we're going and our learnings so that you can learn too and that you can also ask us questions. And for those of you who are already on that advanced journey, you can share your perspectives. Um, and we're hoping that you'll find that really, really fun and um, it'll give us the chance to get you all engaged and involved. So this is the lineup of what's going to be happening for the next six months. We do hope that when we get to June, we'll be able to run a live event, event. But for broadcast sake and for access, you will be able to follow us on Zoom the whole way through. And so how do you, how do you stay up to date? Please, for those of you who are AFC members, You'll hear about the work that we're doing on our regular newsletters. If you haven't signed up yet for membership, please do. We love having more of you from industry, from technology, fashion businesses, really getting involved in the shape of our business and our industry as it moves forward. For the AFC Fashion Tech Labs program, you're going to hear about it in the press, but also via our socials. So if you're not keeping pace with us on our socials, Here's our handles here. And so before I jump into q and I wanted to say thank you. Thank you for being part of the session today. If you've got more questions, please jump in. Because otherwise we're about to go there. So the way I'm gonna run Q&A, there's a bunch of really great questions that have come up on the Q&A. And a few of you had emailed me before today so I'm just going to pick off one or two and I'll hand over to each panelist to answer. So I'll name the person and the technology company that it belongs to. And so what I might do is kick off with the first really cool question, which is about savings. So are you able to qualify the savings by using the digital applications discussed today, e.g. Quadrant and Bandicoot? So I might pass that question on to Pete. That would be really wonderful if Pete doesn't mind answering that question. Uh, yeah, it's it's obviously a great question and and something that we've looked very closely with with, uh, with and something that we've we've actually done um, to prepare for this process is start to develop a cost calculator 
um, for brands going through all of the various inputs um, with that. And it's, uh, it's something that we're looking to develop and, and talking with various, various parties about how we can further develop that process. Um, certainly we'd be happy to share with brands the work that we've done so far um, that looks at those inputs and how we can compare digital to physical. Um, and the results are, um, are very, very promising, particularly not just looking at the, um, uh, the direct financial costs, there is definitely big savings there, but also in regards to those other, those other key, key costs we talked about in terms of time to market, um, big savings there, obviously time to market, reducing time to market really reduces risks for brand. So that's a big one for us. And also, you know, the, the, big, um, the big issue of, of envir environmental sort of cost there. Um, there's research out that shows that a, a digital garment um, creates 97% less carbon than producing a physical garment. So things like that, we can really make significant change there. So certainly happy to get the details of anybody who wants it and we can, we can provide the, the work we've done so far on, on those costs. Thank you so much for, for taking us through that detail, Pete. Really appreciate that. Next question is, is from Peter. Hi, 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 Peter. I know that you're one of our wonderful fashion um, program participants and she's got a question for the Bandicoot team. Does the tech allow for representation of full drape and volume of fabrics? Uh, I'll pick that one up. Thanks for that question. Yeah, that, it's got, of course very important to make the fabric look realistic and the garment look realistic that you have the correct drape. Um, so the Bandicoot technology is about all about the visuals, making sure that the appearance is completely faithful to the original. But there's also a, a set of techniques we use that we can use to measure the physics of the fabric as well. So that's its stretch, its thickness, um, whether it stretches differently on the warp and the weft. Um, and all of those parameters can then be handed over to um, Twiller and Pons for simulation in the 3D fashion engine. So Pons, I don't know if you want to talk more about that part of it as well. Yeah, sure. Um, so the software that both Twila and I use allows allow us to integrate, like as uh, Matthew said, like the texture of the fabric, which is really important to understand how the fabric looks, but also some uh, physical properties, like some physical settings that allows the fabric to fall and break and create the volume of the garment in a realistic way, because of course it's very important. And it's a bit technical, so I don't want to go too much into details right now because it might sound confusing. But I'm sure that once uh, the brands will be able to see it like working, it will be very obvious how accurate it is. Thank you so much, both of you. Really appreciate and great question. I've now got a question from the team at UTS. Now I'm hoping Annette is able to help with this great question, which is what's the best way to connect with the folks at UTS? So I'm not part of the core program, but I'd love to leverage some of their capabilities. How do I connect with the UTS team, Annette? Sorry, Tracy, you'll have to um, add her to the speaker. <laughs> So. Got it, got it. Pardon me for one minute and I will come back to the question on UTS and make sure that we've got that point of access. Instead, I have a question here for Twila. Um, Donna has asked, what program does Couture CAD use? Twila, please love, love to learn more about the technology behind Couture CAD. I'm sure, Donna. We use, uh, for pattern making, we use StyleCAD. Um, and for the simulations, we work with Clo 3D. Hope that answers your question. <laughs> <laughs> a great question there. Now I've got a, I've got a question for Simon. Um, Simon, a future map question, which is about how does the future map assessment align with UTS? And are you going to help me translate my report into action? So from one of our applicants, a chance to talk about that handoff between the future map session and the UTS session. Yeah, so what we what we try and do, so in future map, we, we ask people to um, look at where they are now, where they'd like to be in a, over a two year window. 
Um, we, it's not a benchmark. It's not an accreditation. There's no badges. No, you know. So it's really about honesty about where you are. So we ask people across a range of subjects from um, market positioning, um, uh, leadership as well, uh, through into innovation, and think about where are you as an organization and what what areas do you want to do more on now that helps us that by definition then we start to see where are the gaps where's the gap between where you are and you where you want to be um we we apply two lenses to that we have a thematic lens which is the first one that says overall where are the areas that perhaps you need to be thinking about most uh, but we also then have some um, uh, machine learning calcs that run in the background um, and do a lot of fair bit of comparison and then and then push back a message that says well, for you, uh, these are the actions I think you should take first. These are the things that you ought to be jumping in on. Uh, and often that comes back to things like um, making sure you're regularly talking about um, what innovation can do for you and that you're keeping up with trends, et cetera. And that's where that we then have that logical connection with the UTS team. Um, we, we, we have um, had in the past various grant programs that come and go a little bit that we can connect into UTS, but we know they're their capabilities across places like Rapido, um, Tech Lab, and other functions that, that allow them then to give um, pick up on some of those ambitions and those ambition points and maybe identify a small project. So the role for us really is to get people thinking broadly around innovation uh, and what those gaps and opportunities might be. Uh, and then we sort of funnel that into here are the five, six things that we think um, are actions you ought to be thinking about taking, things you should be following up. We give people reading material to send them across to some TED Talks and stuff that we think will help promote their thinking. Uh, but that's when the UTS team are really well placed through Annette, John and others uh, to help guide you into uh, the university sector. And, and I will say, having been reasonably new to working with the universities over the last couple of years, uh, I think John mentioned it, um, it's very impressive the way UTS and many other universities have embraced the SME community and, and are keen to work with them more. So we shouldn't be scared or nervous of them. I know they're big, intelligent organizations, uh, but they are very keen to work more with the um, uh, with, with the, the smaller organizations now. And we see some great projects. We've got one, an organization, there's four people, and they're doing robotics with one of the universities. So we, we see plenty of that. Fabulous bridge, Simon. Thank you and welcome, Annette. We, we had a really great question before and um, just asking about, I'm not, a, I'm not a successful applicant, but I love the program and I'd love to get involved with UTS. How do I participate? Thanks, Tracy. Um, the uh, easiest way is just actually to contact me. So you can do that through email, sme at uts.edu.au, or you can call me. 0417 and just so you know I have actually got I'm about my background's industry so I've actually engaged a lot of SMEs in the past across a number of universities so I'm really looking forward to working with the fashion sector on this and think of me as your butler I will guide you through the UTS process to make sure that you're engaged in the right way and that you get the outcomes that you're looking for and that's my promise to you. Thank you so much, Annette. Yeah. I love the, the butler, the butler perspective. And in the chat, Annette's actually shared her direct, her direct mobile and her email contact details. So do grab that. And I had a really wonderful question um, earlier in our session actually asking for socials and website links and whatnot. We have prepared a, 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 a briefing kit that includes all of the links and whatnot for all of these wonderful businesses that have come together. I'll make sure that that's distributed broadly so that you can go dig in, make meetings, meet one another and um, share on this journey beyond today's session. Before we wrap up, I just wanna grab one, one or two last questions. And, and one of the questions here is actually about the scope of the program. I know sustainability and technology is a huge domain. And we had to be really judicious. We've picked off a tiny little segment in the massive conversation that is fashion meets impact. And for the purposes of our incubator, our lab, we've grabbed onto sampling. And we've grabbed onto sampling because we think it's a really interesting place to create impact, time, cost, and carbon reduction that generally hasn't been spoken about. There's lots of really cool work being done at the consumer end of the um, upcycle, recycle, reuse, repurpose, digitize. 
But what if we started at the very beginning of the process? And so that's why for this particular program, we're tackling sampling. Now, Michaela, great question around what happens after sampling and sales and all the um, other supply chain opportunities to create innovation. I think that's wonderful. And um, we do hope that this is Labs 1.0 and that there'll be 2.0 and 3.0 and 4.0 and that we'll be able to produce a lab series. Um, so thank you for your really neat and pertinent question. Um, I hope that that helps you uh, appreciate where we got to today. Um, any other completely burning questions? I might just take the opportunity to say thank you to all of our panelists here. Thank you for joining us. And I wanted to pass back to Layla from the AFC to close us out for today. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Tracy, and thank you to all the panelists. You've, uh, you've done a great job explaining this, uh, this great uh, program, and we're really excited to see what comes out of it. Um, there was a question, and I'll just end with this, about uh, uh, the AFCs, um, if we have a, um, a sort of a deadline or a, a timing. I think AFC has a carbon reduction target. So if we had a carbon reduction target, the simple answer is not yet. Um, we are in the process. I don't know if all of you know, but we've uh, received a grant to work on a product stewardship scheme for the clothing and textile uh, sector. And we will have we'll be having a town hall on Wednesday afternoon at 3 p.m. So if you're interested, please come to that, where we'll talk about what we're planning uh, together with a great, great partners, a consortium that we've uh, put together um, to tackle that, as Tracy said, massive issue of sustainability and responsible practice in the fashion uh, and textile industry. So um, we, we are, we're going to work hard towards, towards finding solutions to this. Uh, uh, this is this uh, very large and very important um, area. So, um, and and uh, again, um, thank you everyone for coming. We very much appreciate your participation. Uh, Prue, I'm assuming we will, um, for, the, for the questions that we haven't uh, uh, answered, that we'll get back to, you know, participants um, and, and try to answer their questions. Um, and um, that's it. Have a great day, everyone, and looking forward to the next session. Thank you.